Hi everybody, Cheaply Chic, welcome back to my channel. And for those of you who are new, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. Today I decided before I jump into my Abide journal and do another spread here, I want to make some paper ruffles. I had picked up a few scraps of this coffee dyed paper. I go through a lot of tea stains and coffee dyed paper making all of these journals, as you might imagine. I just hate knowing how much waste that I do have in the end. So I decided here I just ruffled a piece of paper and I thought that is cute in and of itself, but it might be fun to make a few decorative paper ruffles that I can use in this month's journal. So that is my plan for today. And if this is a new idea to you, it's a super simple thing to do if you have a sewing machine, but maybe it's a brand new idea to you or you haven't tried it yet. So I'm just going to get started. I have some of this dyed scrap that I thought was so cool. It's like, um, I, my friend actually dyed this paper and I think she had coffee stained it and then used some ink spray in the water and saturated the paper with it. So this is a really pretty piece. I definitely want to use that. I also thought some of the music paper from the collection would be fun. And then I just grabbed a piece of text that might be fun as well. So normally you would use your scraps. Obviously that's a smart thing to do for these ruffles because we all go through paper scraps, right? But I am going to use some book page and create a few ruffles and I'm not even measuring it. I'm just kind of eyeballing it and seeing what I want. Um, where my ruffles, where I want them to be, how big I want them to be, how wide I should say. I'm going to make one skinny one. Okay. I have a couple of those. Okay. So I'm just going to start by inking up the scrap paper and the first one I'm going to use this vintage photo and I'm not going to be too careful I just want to get some of the ink color here I'm using a brown craft mat this time instead of my plastic because of the size of these scraps of paper and I apologize for my shaky desk Because this paper is going to get ruffled up, it doesn't really matter about the pattern of the ink so much. I think I'm going to do another one. I have a lot of these little scraps here. Some of them I'm going to try to decorate a little bit more than others. So I haven't made a lot of these paper ruffles. I've seen so many on YouTube make them and create them. And I've always wanted to stop and give it a try. I will say I definitely enjoy fabric ruffles more. I just like the texture of that and the chunkiness that it adds to my journals. So I haven't really broken out the scraps and played with them probably like I should. So I'm excited to do this. I'm going to do a couple in this abandoned coral color. And just go through here and do some more. But I decided to pick up a piece one day and I ruffled it and I was very pleased <laughs> with how simple it is and how cute it can look on your journal. So I thought I would just bring you guys along on making a couple of them. And maybe you would want to try your hand at it too. I have filmed a little video on using on how to create fabric ruffles for your journals. And I had a no sew option there on using a stapler. And you could definitely do that again with these fabric ruffles, use a stapler. Maybe I'll do that really quick in the video too. Okay, let's see. I think I also want to use this bundled sage color. I did some stamping with that in the last video. And I really like this color. So yeah, I'll do one of these book pages. And 
I'm getting my coral ink fingers on the ruffle. That's okay. Maybe just this plain one here. So I hope that all of you watching this video, I hope that you are having a great day. I know it could be any time of the day, but I'm very excited today because it's the first day in quite a few days I've had a little bit of downtime to be able to stop and film these videos and play in this journal collection. It's just been really busy. I know all of you who are in the middle of summer right now are probably pretty busy too. It just tends to be that way. With all of the graduation parties. And in my family, there's a lot of summer birthdays. So those are thrown in there. And then there's the girls, both of my daughters graduated this year, one from high school and one got her associates. So it's just been really busy and we're getting ready to move then my oldest daughter back down to the new school where she will go get her bachelor's. So it's going to be another couple of busy weeks, but I know that after the middle of August, it's just all going to stop. <laughs> you know, that's what seems to happen here for me. So I am looking forward to that, but I also don't want to wish time away, especially with my girls. They grow up so quickly and before you know it, it'll all be over and I won't be so busy, right? So anyway, at least not with the same kind of things. <laughs> all right, I wanna ink up one of those blue papers. I think I'm going to do that to this one as well. These are some pretty scraps. Okay, so now I have all of these little scrap pieces here and I am going to create them with my Abide journal in mind. So I have this baggie of cheesecloth scraps and I thought it might be fun to try to add it to the ruffle. I don't know how much luck I'm going to have with this because of the sewing of the ruffle, but this is just some natural colored cheesecloth. It hasn't been bleached. Okay. And I just want a little tiny strip. I hope the colors are coming through okay and everything. I got this new phone because once again, my daughter needs needed a new phone before she went away to school and I'm sure like a lot of you we do a lot of hand-me-downs <laughs> here so it was time for me I was just a couple months away from having my phone paid off and you know it was time for me to hand that phone down and get the new phone but I get a little frustrated with setting everything up making sure all of the camera just Oh, I'm not a very techie person. I do what I can and I learn what I can, but man, it frustrates me <laughs> to have to figure it all out and set it up because I'm already busy. And then to take the time to have to figure out new programs and oh, it just really gets me, but I think I'm getting it all figured out. And it is a very nice phone. I think the picture quality and the video quality is awesome. So I tacked a little bit of glue here on each end of this paper with the cheesecloth. And I'm just going to let that dry. And we'll see what happens when we stitch that up. I might do that again to this one. Or something else I picked up with some of this scrapbook paper. 
Although for a project like this, I should probably break out my scrap bin. That would probably be a lot smarter of a move than cutting into a piece of paper. So I don't know. I have three of these iris bins full of scrap papers. I just don't have the time to break into them like I used to. Just working on projects and stuff. So let's see. There is some like ledger paper. Those could be fun ruffles. Maybe I'll take out one of those. Maybe this yellow piece here. Ooh, I have some scraps of this eco dyed paper. I'm gonna get those out. <laughs> Turn those into ruffles. Okay, what else? And then lots of scraps from collections gone by. Okay, I think for now, I'm just going to trim up this yellow piece. I'm going to make a strip that's like a quarter of an inch, maybe, if I measured it. Yep, it's like a quarter of an inch, so I can add that to my ruffle. I'm going to make a few of those. I think I'll make one that's more like a half an inch. I'll make a couple of those because I do like adding some wide stitches. So everything's getting out of hand here on my craft desk already. I think this yellow would be pretty on there. I'm going to use the same coral ink color. And just hit the edges on this really quick. And then I just grab this art glitter glue because of the fine tip I am starting to enjoy this glue a little bit more than I said I was before I do like the thin tip it does make it nice although I do enjoy the fabric tag I don't know it's just it dries a little quicker it doesn't this art glitter glue, you have to be careful because it will warp your paper and give it that wet look. And I'm not, if you're doing a thin coffee dyed, you know, regular copy paper, I don't like that. That's why I like fabric tack so much, so. All right, I'll leave that one as is. Where did my, I have that one with the cheesecloth. I think I'm going to add some cheesecloth. Oh, same piece. It's funny, I'm drawn to that. To this green one. Cut, mm, let's see. Maybe I'll make this one a little wider. Maybe stretch out past the edge of the ruffle. Maybe, maybe a little bit. Just put a little dot of glue right there. Try to get that to dry. And then bring it down and add another little drop of glue down here. And we're just gonna see what happens with this cheesecloth. There. Set that one aside. I think I'm going to do more of the cheesecloth pieces because I do like it. another strip and purposefully not being careful on the cutting because it looks better ragged to me anyway okay stretch it that far 
that one. I think I'll do a coral one too. My cheesecloth is all folded, is all folded up in a funky pattern. But that should be fine. <laughs> Let's see, put that there. So as I'm filming this video, it is July 2nd, I think. Yes, July 2nd. Oh. I made that one a little, to glue this one up a little higher. We are going camping with my parents, with the fourth being on Thursday. That's when we'll be leaving. So we're not going for a ex very extended time, but it will be nice to have Friday and Saturday, full days of camping and getting up to that campground. It's, um, a nice little quiet family campground. I really enjoy it. There's a lake there, lots of trails, lots of wildflowers. So it's just nice to be able to get away for a few days. In the midst of all the chaos and busyness, I'm actually hoping to have these videos filmed and then I can work on them <laughs> while I am there. You know, that's not really taking a vacation, but it will feel good to be able to get some of this editing done that I've fallen behind on with all of the activities of June. I think I'm going to put this one off center a little bit. Right in this strip of blankness. Blankness, is that a word? Probably not there. And I want to let all of this glue dry, of course, before I run it through my machine. I will say though, I have stitched on thousands, I'm sure, of pieces of paper, dyed and inked and glued sometimes, not as often, but that machine is a trooper. I love it so much. Okay, I'm just going to trim that off. So I'm just going to let that piece dry. Okay, I might just leave that blank, those two pieces. And see, I have these little eco dyed pieces. I'm just going to leave as is. Okay, so I will set up next to my sewing machine and we'll start these ruffles. Okay, so I am in a super awkward position, <laughs> but I'm just going to go for it. So all you're doing is folding your paper as you stitch. I, think I like this side better. So I'm just going to start by making a little fold on my paper. Let's see if I can get a little closer. Get my, oh wow. Of course, my machine's gonna act a fool. Okay, I'm going to do this again and I'm just going to leave that in here because isn't it typical I just bragged on my sewing machine and it acted like that. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to start the stitch. And then this is a really stiff piece of cardstock. So this is going to be a little more difficult. To fold, because usually I would just press the paper up there and fold it. And something that I like to do, I don't always like my ruffles to be all perfect. You guys know that if you watch my channel, I like things to be a little off. So I'm going to fold my ruffle. Hopefully the angle's okay. I am watching all of this through the viewfinder, so forgive me. And then I'm just going, this is really stiff paper, so it's 
hard to maneuver. Of course, I had to start with that kind there. And I'm just going to go right off the paper. So then you can see here, there is that piece of ruffle and it is super cute. I love it. So that was a thick piece of chipboard or like cardboard. So let's do one of the easier pieces of paper. Okay, so I really like this blue piece. So I'm just going to get it started by folding my paper like this. I'm going to fold this side over and then fold it back down. There really isn't any, or any right way or wrong way to do this. All you're doing is folding your paper and stitching it. <laughs> so I'm just showing you how I am making mine. I'm just going to get that started and then you can see the paper just folds so much easier. You can move a little quicker and I'll make this one a little more uniform and again I'm looking through the viewfinder of looking through the phone so I don't really have a good eye on my ruffle. And I like it because it's quick like that. Maybe I should try to stitch over my <laughs> tear in that strap. There. I like that. So again, this was a this one is a little imperfect because I didn't stitch down the center, but I like that and it'll be really cute. I can decorate over that ruffle. And then I do like the little touch of stitching that tear in that paper. So that's pretty. And now let's try this piece with cheesecloth. Hopefully this just is smooth and works how I hope it will. Get it started, and then we're going to fold it under. I'm just going to grab a piece of plastic here and get it started a little bit. There, that helps with the fabric. And I need to do it again. Okay, I would definitely say the cheesecloth makes it a little more difficult <laughs> to fold it. And you know, if you have a phone in your face and you're trying to do it as difficult as possible, that doesn't help either. But maybe it's not going to be as tightly folded. There, that's easier, I am finding. Except that my ruffle is getting all wacky, which is fine. I'm just going to fold it back this way a little bit. And then, sorry, my big old hand's in the way. And then, there. Okay, so that is the ruffle with the cheesecloth. I really like that. All right, so I'm just going to finish stitching these ruffles really quick and we will decorate them. Okay, so I got my fabric ruffles done. I really like how these turned out. And of course, you know, if you wanted longer ruffles, you could add some paper into your stitching. I didn't show that, but using a regular size piece of paper like this, of course, it's going to shrink your ruffle down. So you would just tack some paper on to the edge of it, you know, or you could even just cheat and glue them together depending on how long you want them. But I am very, very pleased with these. I think they're super cute and I will have fun decorating them. I also saved one of these little cheesecloth ruffles 
so that we could staple it together and see how that works out. I'm going to use this little tiny attacher this time. In the past, I've used a regular stapler and it's great, but look at how cute that is. So all that you do then, if you want that metal look or you don't have a sewing machine, this cheesecloth is kind of tricky. If you were not using the sewing machine and you were stapling like this, you could add more glue. I'm just nervous to add too much glue and put it through my machine. I'm going to turn and go that way. Just means that it just need a little bit of patience. Oh my goodness, I think I love this just as much as the machine. This little tiny attacher. Staples are cool. The bigger staples are cool too, but those are cute. There we go. And you know, actually, I think I'm not going to finish the edge of the staple because I have my die cuts that I'm using along in this collection and I could add it to the bottom of my ruffle. And then I can save a couple little staples <laughs> at the same time because, yeah, those aren't very common or cheap, right? So I'm just going to trim up my strings a little bit here. Okay, so let's start with that stapled one. That is very inspiring to me, I love that. I think that looks awesome. And I do have all of these die cuts. They come from this Kayser Craft collection. It's the paper that I had used to make the journal cover. And I'm really liking them. I could just add one to the bottom of this ruffle actually like that and I'm going to do that. I get my fabric tag here and let's see I'm just gonna add some glue here okay that's a good start oh my goodness I'm excited about these all of a sudden. <laughs> I got re-inspired. I think I'll do this one. I love the cheesecloth on here. It's definitely worth the hassle of getting that cheesecloth on there. And you know, you could take some of the scrapbook paper from the kit and do some fussy cutting on these succulents be fun or you could rip some edges and just glue it on there do a little paper collaging with it because this paper is super cute and those succulents could be cute on there if you don't have these die cuts I think I'm just going to add this one here okay And maybe I won't finish decorating these until I am using them in my journal because I have the thought of adding words to them, but I don't want to stifle where I can use them in my book. Let's see. I'm loving these succulent die cuts. I have to say, I think I've used quite a few of them. I don't want to use them all up on this, but I can't stop myself either. <laughs> okay, I'm going to glue that one there. I think I'm going to leave that one. Let's do this pretty coral. That one just blends in too much, but look at how pretty that is. Such a great color. I think I'll glue that one on there. Wait, or do I want that? No, I like this. Okay, so I'm gluing this one on here. Okay, 
Okay, so my daughter, <laughs> ah, she just came in and um, she's going over her prices and things for school and we thought we were going to have, she thought she was going to have to take out a little bit more money to cover unexpected costs that happen. You guys know how it is. It's like she's going to run an apartment instead of living in the dorms and we were short two grand that we were trying to come up with without the crunch of living, you know, two grand's quite a bit. It's a nice little chunk of money, you know. But then she was going over her account at the school and there's this two grand. She came in here sobbing because there's two grand in her account and she doesn't know where it came from. And she's going back over it and she literally doesn't know where it came from. So she just came in to tell me that and it is just, it's a lot of good news. It's a, it's a good news for us. So anyway, I don't know. I'm in the middle of filming this video in the middle of working in my abide journal. And for those of you who received the collection, from me and read my letter and it's just like we just keep going and we keep expecting God to move on our behalf if that's where we're putting our trust and it's just awesome when he shows up in those ways that we're not expecting him so anyway little side notes getting back into my ruffles <laughs> All right, and I just completely soaked my journal <laughs> with the baby wipe. But that's okay, it'll dry. It's already been wet once, guys, all this dyed paper, and it just gives it more character. Okay, so let's see. To see what these little ruffles look like. Oh my goodness, I love them. They're so sweet, and I think they will look good on any page. I want to do something different here, but even on these little half pages here, I like that. Super, super cute and fun little project that you can do for your journaling and any paper project as well. So I just wanted to share this video with you guys and show you how I was making my fabric ruffles. I hope that you enjoyed it. I will close this video for now. I will definitely be working in my journal in the next video. So thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch. I hope that you enjoyed. If you did, please don't forget to hit that like button down below. Also, links will be in the description box down below for any items that I use today, as well as a link to my Etsy shop in case you're interested in picking up an Abide collection for yourself. Thank you guys so much. 